Hello everyone, here's a quick demo that features the MSP430 Launchpad paired with the CC3100 Wi-Fi Booster Pack. Um, so between these two boards, um, we're able to create a com complete embedded Wi-Fi development um, environment. Uh, we also have a lithium polymer rechargeable battery booster pack plugged on as well. Um, and this enables a sort of completely untethered system, you know, both on a communication standpoint, thanks to the uh, Wi-Fi booster pack, and then also on a power standpoint, thanks to the lithium polymer battery that's available on the booster pack. Um, so this launch pad's available for about $13, so very affordable development board for microcontroller development. Um, the Wi-Fi booster pack is available for $20. So for about $33, you get a complete embedded Wi-Fi development kit. Um, and in this particular instance, I have it hooked up to a very simple potentiometer knob. Um, in a way, this is sort of a stand-in for any sensor you may be interested in monitoring remotely. Um, so what's actually happening in this particular scenario is I've programmed my launchpad using a tool called Energia. It's an open source uh, development um, environment, um, very maker friendly. Um, I'm sure once you guys see it, it'll look very familiar to you as it is a fork of other open source projects. Uh, so a lot of the same APIs and libraries will actually work on many of our launchpad development kits. Um, so in this particular demo, I've got this uh, potentiometer knob hooked up to my launchpad and I'm actually publishing my potentiometer data using MQTT. And I'm publishing that data to a cloud side application. Um, and in the cloud, I'm actually triggering various events. Um, so the first event that I actually trigger is sending a status OK sort of message to this Wi-Fi launch pad. So this is the CC3200 Wi-Fi launch pad. Um, it's, I think, $30. It's a single board, and it features the new CC3200 uh, ARM microcontroller plus Wi-Fi transceiver all on one chip. Um, so it's a complete embedded Wi-Fi application. In this particular instance, I required two chips, uh, the MSP430 and the Wi-Fi transceiver. Um, on this particular uh, board, however, it's just one chip, the CC3200, which features both the ARM MCU and the Wi-Fi transceiver. Um, so you can actually see that this launch pad is hooked up to these 8x8 LED matrices. Um, and it's just displaying a message that this launch pad is, uh, is sending. Um, basically saying that the uh, position of the potentiometer is okay. Um, but what's eventually going to happen is as I turn the potentiometer knob, that message is actually going to change from status okay to alert. Basically signifying to me remotely that the potentiometer value is at an quote unquote unsafe threshold. Um, so because these two things are physically next to each other, um, again, this is all going through Wi-Fi. So this launch pad is actually MQTTing to the cloud. And this launch pad is subscribed to that same exact MQTT broker. Um, so even though they're physically located um, next to each other, this launch pad could be on the other side of the world connected to a Wi-Fi network, and we'd still be able to see the remote status update. Uh, in addition to that, I also have my cell phone here because not only am I triggering um, this launch pad to react to my sensor values, I'm also going to send a text message when my sensor value is over a particular threshold. Um, and I've actually set various trigger points at different thresholds. So as I turn this knob, I'll be triggering different actions. Uh, the first one that will happen is I get a text message on my phone. Um, and that text message will be formatted with the actual sensor data. I'll turn that knob a little bit more, then I'll get a, uh, send a tweet. I'll actually get a tweet on my phone. Again, the Twitter message will include my updated sensor value. I'll turn the knob a little bit more, and then at that point, I'll actually um, get a notification on my Android. So three different actions are gonna be triggered in the cloud, um, thanks to the data that my launchpad is sending over MQTT. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and give it a shot. So first thing to notice is again, the status right now is at an okay level. But as I turn this knob, um, I should hopefully uh, get, a, um, get a, uh, a text message on my phone. So the first thing I'll do is I'll reset the board. Um, again, the launch pad is hooked up to a battery pack here. And the first thing that the launch pad will do is connect to my Wi-Fi network here at home. So my launch pad is now uh, connected. So I'm just gonna start turning this knob here and I should get a text message here on my phone shortly. There you go. So I can open up the, uh, my text message app and I can actually show you. And you can see that the launch pad sent some sensor data at 12.42 p.m., which is the current time. And you get the little timestamp right there for my text message. Um, and it says threshold exceeded 529. 
So the threshold was actually 500. My sensor value was at 529, which caused the uh, text message to, to send. And we're using a uh, web service called Twilio to actually generate that text message. So I'm just going to put my phone back down and I'm going to continue turning this knob. So as I continue to turn that knob, the next thing that should happen is I should get a tweet notification on my phone. So as I turn the knob here, I'll actually hold the phone a little bit closer so you can see that the tweet will come in on my notification bar up here. So I'm just going to continue turning the knob. There we go, and we should see it there in a second. And there you go, you can see the Twitter notification now. Um, and again, um, it's formatted accordingly, and there it is, MCU Launchpad. Um, and I'm tweeting to my personal Twitter handle. Um, that way I get uh, every notification. So I threw in a couple of hashtags because that's what people do in Twitter. And I also get the, uh, the reading number, 1014. So the threshold for sending the tweet was actually 1,000. Cool, so I'll put my phone back down. Uh, the next thing I'll do is I'll continue turning the knob. Um, and what's going to happen next is when my threshold exceeds, or when my sensor value exceeds the sensor reading of 1,500, I'll get a notification on my Android device. So I'm going to continue turning the knob here. And there you go, I get the uh, notification on my Android. So I'm just going to scroll down here. And you can see all of these notifications because I've been running this demo for a couple of weeks now. But the latest one is right here on the very, very top. Android, Android notification, reading number 1505, and that happened at 12.43 p.m. Um, so just like that, we triggered three different events in the cloud. The first one was a text message, second one was a tweet, and the third one was a notification on my Android device with the help of the uh, Notify My Android app. Um, and again, um, there are REST APIs for interacting with these various web services. Um, so now, let's go ahead and turn our attention to the 8x8 LED matrix. So I'm going to continue turning the knob here, and not only, um, and, and it'll continue to display status OK, until I exceed that threshold. And in this case, the threshold, I believe, is 2,500. So I'm going to keep on turning my knob here. And you can see it says status OK. I just exceeded the threshold now. So we should see status alert on the next time here. Yeah, so there you go. So you actually see it says alert now, uh, because I have exceeded the safe threshold of 2,500. Um, so this potentiometer is hooked up to one of the analog input channels of our microcontroller. So it actually returns a value between 0 and 4095. Um, and that number is going to change depending on the position of my knob. Um, so there you have it. I'm going to go ahead and turn this down back all the way down to 0. Um, and that should reset it. And again, I should get a status of OK instead of the, the scarier alert message that we had earlier. Um, and, and there you have it. So we just demonstrated very quickly uh, a complete end-to-end -end Internet of Things application. In this case, I've got a uh, sort of MQTT publisher publishing sensor data to the cloud. We use the cloud side application to trigger those various events, whether it was sending a text message or a tweet or a notification to your Android. Um, I haven't shown it here, but I'm also actually data logging those values into a, a cloud-based uh, database as well. Um, and that allows me to do uh, analytics or export it as a um, comma-separated file um, later on for my own personal use. Um, and then the last thing I do is I'm also sending the data to this other launch pad here, um, which is giving me this sort of remote notification on the 8x8 LED matrices. Um, so that's it. Um, you can learn more about the hardware and software at ti.com slash launchpad. And I'll just write it down here. ti.com slash launchpad. And launchpad is the uh, development um, ecosystem that I used here on a hardware perspective. Um, and then on a software uh, perspective, we use a tool called Energia, uh, which is an open source, community-driven development environment for writing uh, embedded software for these launchpad kits. Um, and it actually enables code compatibility between this hardware setup as well as this launchpad uh, among, among some of the others. Uh, so thanks for watching, um, and stay tuned for, for some additional videos.